All right, folks, we're going to start tearing into the excursion. Now, well, got to get that cylinder head off. Let's uh, go ahead. Let's get right into it. There was no sense in putting it off, so I grabbed my tools and I cued the music. And there was a problem immediately. Where's my funnel? The wind's blowing and it's getting cold, hence the sweater. So why don't I put it in the garage? Well, let's find out. So from the garage floor there to this spot here is six foot nine inches. So yeah, I could let the air out of the tires and the excursion will just barely squeak underneath that but my problem is is from this wall to these sensors is about 20 and a half feet and in order to have enough clearance to walk around the front of the truck and the back of the door I need about 22 feet so you know that's not gonna work I'm gonna be able to close my garage but the absolute first thing I'm gonna do before I start draining the coolant take this bumper off anybody else predicting the future of me beating the f out of my shins right now? Uh, oh, almost, almost. My coolant thing is filling up again. How much coolant does this damn truck hold? Now, I guess I should be quite clear that I'm not going to get the cylinder head off today. I'm just getting a bunch of crap out of my way on this one. I'm gonna find out what Ford Tech did this and I'm gonna f***ing kill him. He did the recall for the cruise control, but he zip tied it to the air box wiring harness loom for the mass airflow sensor. So now I gotta cut that off. Why would you do that? If you have to ask yourself the question, should I disconnect the battery? Disconnect the battery. for the step stool. This step stool is still not tall enough and this damn release latch keeps poking me. I'll have to take that son bitch off. Just let her dangle. So that way I can stop getting poked in the freaking ribs with that thing. And we can start there. Probably leave the throttle body on. All of these vacuum lines, all of this electrical connectors, alternator is gonna come off. So I would like to have the intake off tonight because I want to get my bore scope down into the intake and see what's going on with that valve. Because that's going to be interesting to see. I am, as you would say, out of practice. I just spent the last 30 minutes trying to remember if this fan was reverse thread or not. Turns out it is lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. And it also turns out I got to take the shroud out with it. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. See, look at all of that room now. So much room for activities. I could actually probably leave the radiator in place now. You know, I mean, I was thinking of removing it, but now I can get it in place. I mean, this is the cylinder head I'm trying to take off. You see all of that crap in the way that's not going to move. And then you come over to the driver's side. Look at how easy that is. Why couldn't it have been this side? Why? Oh, well, such is life. And since I've now decided to keep the radiator in place, put this cardboard here just to keep the fins and all of that nice and straight. Uh, you know, it, was, it wasn't cheap, you know, $5.99 at Home Depot. But a uh, heck of a lot cheaper than a new radiator. I am going to go through so many of these bags. Look, I'm using a bag for it. two bolts for the fan shroud. And then I'm going to use a bag for two bolts for the hood latch. And hopefully this marker stays. Oh, shout out to Rockstar. 
because uh, I drink it, but they're not paying me for it. At least not yet. All right, so other than the fuel lines and the 13 volts that hold the intake on, this thing's ready to go. So, just a wee little problem. Let me get you out of the wind here. Somewhere in my awesome little arsenal of cool toys to play with here, I have the tools to take those fuel lines off. Problem is, is they're those cheap little round plastic ones. And if you know which ones I'm talking about, you know just how easily they are to vanish. Um, if you have no idea what I'm on about, then just disregard this part. So, I'm probably... You know what, yeah, I'm just gonna run to the parts store, buy another set, they're like five bucks. Crisis averted. Oh. 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 Oh, why do I do this to myself? Oh. Oh. All right, so intake is out. We still got this valve cover to come off, this valve cover to come off. All of these pulleys gotta come off, timing cover and all that, so I can get the chains off to get the heads off. And uh, yeah, uh, there sits that. And uh, whipped out the bore scope to check out, I'm gonna stick in that intake there to see if we can see the valve and see it's all, see how screwed up it is if we can see anything at all and uh yeah the battery's dead on that so we are par for the course on shift heads here today so fantastic Woo. so yeah we'll go ahead and let that battery charge up and we'll check it out later and my phone's in wonder who this is it's one of those warranty scammers hi this is from can you verify the year make and model of your vehicle uh actually i want you to verify the year make and model of my vehicle that's oh and they hung up <laughs> Something interesting to look at while we're waiting for that battery to charge is you can see, okay, that's intake port number one. Doesn't look too bad. Intake port number two, but then you got intake port number three, and there's that clean spot right there. Very interesting. You look on number three, or number, that's number four, that's number five. That's a little weird. So that's most likely where the compression's been going through, but since it's so deep down in the cylinder, and you can see, can't really get a good idea, but you can also see that that's dirty, that's number two, that's dirty. And we can see how kind of clean number three is. Interesting. We got the inspection camera in there. It's really hard to see this thing. But you can see right there, that appears to be a crack in the valve seat. However, I can't be too certain on that. There's the valve. Let's get back up, back up, back up. Too close, too close. Doesn't look too bad, but there's that crack right there that you can see. But, uh, yeah, I think that's it. So. Um, we're gonna wrap this up here for today because, well, my back hurts, my head hurts, my knees hurt, and uh, I don't want to be feeling achy all week and then not want to touch this next weekend. But next weekend, we'll get the valve covers off, timing cover off, exhaust manifold off, and we'll get this to the point where we'll be ready to pull that cylinder head out. But as for now, I'm just gonna cover everything up, plug up all the holes that need to be plugged up, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.